Hi everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of BWD. Today we're gonna learn how to create a rocket launch in Python. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and we have liftoff. If you are new to this channel or you're back watching this video, do not forget you can find timestamps in the description below. And all the code that you're gonna see in this episode is available on GitHub. Just look for the project repo, link in the description below. And now, without further ado, let's get started. Instead of jumping straight into coding, let's go to the board now and make sure that we understand exactly how the program is gonna work. First, we're gonna start by displaying a message to let the user know that the countdown has started. And right after, we're gonna start doing it. Third, we're gonna display the liftoff message and then we're gonna show the rocket flying up. Okay, now let's make an example to visualize this sequence of steps. First, we're gonna see the countdown has started message, then the sequence of seconds, and finally the liftoff message. For now, let's leave the rocket out. Easy, right? Now, let's focus a little bit more on step two. If you think about it, counting can be broken down in two actions. First, we have to display the number, but then we have to wait for one second before displaying the next one. So step number two is gonna be a sequence of these two actions repeated over and over. In episode number one, we've seen that when a set of action is repeated multiple times, that's what we call a loop. And in this case, we're gonna use a for loop. A good way to think about it is, for each element of this group, do this set of actions. So suppose to have a group of n elements in total. We're gonna start with the first element and do action one, action two, and as many actions as we need. This is gonna be done for each element, and we're gonna stop only after the last one. Let's see now how to do this in Python. First of all, we have to declare the cycle. So we're gonna write down for x in values, followed by a semicolon. As you can see, there is a lot of stuff in here, so let's see them one by one. So for and in are both keywords, and they are required by the syntax of the cycle. Then we have the variable which is gonna hold the values from the group that we are cycling over. And in this case, I just chosen X, but it could be anything. It could be Y, it could be number, anything you want. And finally at the end, there is value. For now, let's think about it as a placeholder, meaning that there, there are gonna be either the values that you are cycling over or a variable containing all those values. If that is not clear, don't worry about it because we're gonna see it better in a few seconds. So right after we have declared our cycle, we're gonna write down a list of commands to get all the actions done. And notice how all the commands are shifted to the right. As we've seen in the last episode, this is called indentation. This is used to group together all the commands that belongs to the for cycle, meaning that all those commands must be executed during only the execution of the for loop. Back to our case now, we can easily understand that the set of values that we are talking about are gonna be the numbers from 10 to 1. We're gonna start from the first element, 10, and wait for one second. And we're gonna do it till the very last one, which is gonna be 1. And now it's time for coding this. Let's start by implementing step number one. This is gonna be really easy. We need to display a message and the print function does exactly that. Next, there is step number two, which is the countdown. So we're gonna write down a for loop and we're gonna follow the syntax that we just seen at the board with two differences. The first one, the name of the variable, which in our case is gonna be second, as we are counting down the seconds, and then we need a set of values. So we're gonna write down the numbers from 10 to one in between square brackets. When you put one number or multiple numbers separated by commas between square brackets, you are creating a new data type called list. An easy way to understand it is, just think a list has a bag or a container where you can put whatever you want in there and you can take it out anytime you want. I hope this is clear. If not, just write it down in the comment section below. Okay. Next, we have to display the number, so we're gonna use the print function. Finally, there is step number three, where we're gonna display the liftoff message. And now let's open a window on the right to check out if the code is actually working or not. Let's call the Python interpreter and then the name of the file we are coding in. In my case, that's main, but you can choose whatever you want. 
Okay, we got something, but that's not exactly what we wanted, right? Do you see the problem here? The issue is really simple. The output is right, but it took only one second instead of 10. Fixing this is really easy. We have to pause the for loop after each iteration for one second. This can be easily done by importing the time module and using the sleep function. And using this function is really easy because we need just to provide one input, the number of seconds that the program has to wait, in our case, only one. Great, the countdown is finally working. And now, before moving ahead, let's do a little bit of refactoring. Let's open a Python interactive shell so we can just type in comments and see what we can achieve right away. To count down, we are using a for loop. Let's make an example, counting down to four now. This works perfectly fine in our case. However, if you were to count down to 100, let's say, that wouldn't be very handy. Luckily, there is a better way of doing this. We have just to use the built-in function range, which requires only two inputs, the lower and the upper bound. And that's it. We're gonna get all the numbers that we need. You see it? Way better, right? The only thing that you have to pay close attention is the upper bound, which won't be included. In our case, we want all the numbers from 1 up to 4. That's why I wrote 5 and not 4 as an upper bound. And now, let's go back to the rocket. Let's try to use the range function. So, I'm gonna specify range 10 to 0. As you can see, we didn't get anything out of it. That's because if we want to use range in this way, we need to specify minus 1 Okay, it's time to implement this in our program. Let's check it out if it works. Perfect, now it's time to move to step four. Okay, to start, let's define the rocket variable where we're gonna copy our image. I really like this one. You can find it on the GitHub page, link in the comment section below, but feel free to use whatever you like. And now let's print it after the liftoff message. Let's run the program to see what it's like. Okay, we have two issues to fix here. The first one is that the rocket is immediately displayed after the liftoff message. Instead, we would like to see that after a few seconds. The second one is that when the rocket is displayed, the liftoff message and the countdown numbers are still there. Instead, we would like to see only the rocket image. So we will have to clean the screen. Okay, let's start by solving issue number one. Let's write down slip function after the liftoff message. One second will be enough. Then, to solve issue number two, let's import the OS module. And from here, we're gonna use the system function and pass as an input the string clear. If you are on a window machine, drop clear and pass CLS instead. Okay, and now let's check it out in the window on the right. Great, we finally got what we wanted. The only thing is that the rocket is not flying yet. So let's go back to the board to see how we can make this happen. When we see the rocket flying up to the sky, that's a video. But how can we make one? To answer this question, we have to understand from first principles what a video is exactly. Let's take one single image. Is that a video? No, that's just a photo, right? But what if we add a second image after that and we keep adding images? A video is simply a sequence of images that are displayed one after the other. And when we talk about videos, we don't call images images, but rather frames. This is important, keep it in mind. Let's make a real example now. What you see here on the screen are 12 frames of a horse in motion. Each one is displaying the horse in a different instant of its run. And the magic happens when we display these frames one after the other. Now I'm just displaying a few frames per second. And as you can see, the motion is not really fluid, is it? But let's see what happens when we increase the number of frames per second. Better, right? Let's try again. As you can see, every time that I increase the number of frames per second, the video is getting closer and closer to reality. You see it now? This is exactly what we're gonna do with our rocket. We're gonna create a set of frames, each one displaying the rocket in a different instant of the launch, and then stack them together to get the effect of the motion. But before coding this, let's go back to the board to make sure that we understand how to create a frame of a rocket. We can break down step number four into tasks. First one is to create a frame and second to display it. Should be easy, right? In the first one, the rocket is still at the launch pad. So we're gonna see it at the bottom of our screen. Next, the rocket turns on the engines and starts to flying up. 
So in the second one, we're gonna see it a little bit higher. And as the speed increases, the rocket is gonna fly up. So let's say in the third frame, we're gonna see it closer to the top of the screen. Now the question is, to create a frame is just enough to display the rocket? The answer is no. Keep in mind that the frame has to fill the whole screen. And what is that supposed to mean exactly? Well, if you look at the frames, you're gonna see that there are differences. In the first one, the rocket is still at the launch pad, but in frame two and three, it's not. That's because as the rocket leaves the ground, there's gonna be a distance between the rocket itself and the pad. So we have to display it. And that is gonna be just empty space. But that doesn't stop there because we have to do the same thing for the distance between the rocket and the top of the screen. Great. Hopefully we are on the same page now. If that is not the case, just stick it around with the video because I'm sure it's gonna be in a few seconds as we start coding this step by step. In the right window, I have a Python interactive shell open and we're gonna use it to create the frames step by step. First off, we have to be familiar with string concatenation. Let's say we wanna print the character A. Pretty simple, right? But what if we wanna add also the character B? One way of doing it is just to add the character B to the existing string. A second option is to use the plus operator, which allows to take two separate strings and concatenate them together. Second step is to be familiar with the backslash n. This is usually called new line character. That's because it forces the print function to display whatever character is found after the new line character on a new line. Pretty easy, right? Let's see what happens if we add two new line characters. As you can see, there is now an empty line between A and B, and we can keep adding them, for example 4. However, this doesn't work well if we have to add a lot of new lines. For doing this, we can use the star operator, which let us define the total number of times that we want the character to be repeated instead. You see it? It's really handy. And this doesn't just work with the new line character, but with any character. Great, now we know everything that we need to create the frames. A few minutes ago, we have seen that when we display the rocket, we have also to display the distance from the top and from the bottom. However, these distances are gonna be just empty space, and we can do this with the new line character, if you think about it. Let's start by creating frame number one, when the rocket is still at the launch pad. So the distance from the bottom is gonna be zero, and let's say the distance from the top is gonna be five. Then what I can do is to print five empty lines and then the rocket. However, for now, I'm not gonna use the rocket image, so I'm just gonna print rocket. Easy, right? Of course, this is just a toy example, but the principle is this one. The next thing that we have to figure out is to count the total number of lines on the screen. That's because five is just a number that I made up. Luckily for us, doing this in Python is really easy. We're gonna import once again the OS library, and we're gonna use the getTerminalSize function. As you can see what we get out of it, it's first the number of columns, or in other words, the width of the screen, and second, the total number of lines, which is the height. To get access to this number, we have just to type in dot number of lines after the function call. So now let me save this into a variable that we're gonna call n, and let's try to create frame number one. What I'm gonna do now is to print the new line character n times minus one. Y minus one, because in the last line we're gonna have the rocket. And for now, let's just keep the rocket word as a placeholder. You see it? We got it. All this empty space is just the distance between the rocket itself and the top of the screen. Great, and now we are finally ready to make the rocket fly. Let's start by defining the number of lines variable using the getTerminalSize function. And there is no need to import the US library because we already done it before. Next, let's create the frame variable which is gonna hold the frame that we have to display. This is gonna be the concatenation of three strings. First, the distance between the rocket and the top of the screen. Second, the rocket itself. And finally, the distance between the rocket and the bottom of the screen. Let's start with the first part. As you can see, this is exactly what we had done previously, but there is a difference. There is no minus one, but instead minus 21. And why is that? Because 21 are the number of lines that make up the rocket, or in other words, is the height of the rocket. And how do I know that? Because I just counted. Part two is gonna be the rocket variable. And let's just forget about part three for now. Before running it, let's replace the rocket variable with the frame variable in the print statement. Okay, countdown has started. And here we go, we got frame number one. Let's go back to our file to create the next one. This time, we have to also add the distance between the rocket and the bottom. And this is pretty easy, we have just to add an empty line. 
However, we must not forget to drop one line at the top as well. That's why we have the minus 1 after the minus 21. Let's give it a try. Countdown has started. Great, we got frame number 2, which looks pretty much like frame number 1. Is there any difference though? Well, we would expect to have the rocket a little bit higher compared to the one in frame number 1. And that's exactly what is happening here. As you can see, the very first line of the screen in frame number 2 is empty, whereas in frame number 1 we have the rocket. And the same is also happening for the tip of the rocket. As you can see, in frame number 2, this is shifted one line above. So we have finally come to the key point of the wall exercise. Each frame is gonna differ from the previous one because the rocket is gonna be shifted one line up. And now let's see how we can code this. We're gonna write down a for loop over the total number of lines of the screen. Do not forget, as we've seen at the start of the exercise, that the upper bound in the range function is excluded. That's why we have plus one here. Now let's refactor the frame variable. This way we're gonna be able to generate all the possible frames because the frame variable as it is now is just frame number two are coded. Instead, we have to make this general. First, we're gonna replace the minus one with the actual number of the line. And for the rocket to bottom distance, we're gonna add as many empty line as the actual line number. All right, it's time to check it out. Ouch, there is something that is not working here, right? So if you scroll up, you're gonna see many times the rocket displayed. But why is that? The catch is that after we have displayed the frame, we have to wait for one second. To fix this, let's go back to the code and add the slip function after the print statement. Now it should work. Great, we finally got working. However, our rocket it's not really fast, right? So there is something that we have to fix. Any idea? The catch here is that as the rocket flies up, its speed is gonna go up as well. However, we are not counting that. As we've seen with the horse example, the higher the number of frames, the higher the speed of the horse. And this applies exactly in the same way here. To make the rocket go faster, we have to increase the number of frames. To make this happen, we have just to reduce progressively the amount of time in the slip function. An easy way to do it is to divide the one second by the actual line number. Okay, we have finally come to the end of this video. If you have any question or feedback, just write it down in the comment section below. Do not forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel to not miss next week's episode. In the meantime, if you want to do more, just check the GitHub repo where you can find the next steps for this exercise. And with that said, see you in the next one. Ciao!